Why are they using... Why are they targeting those locations? I don't know. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Mark Janon Jr. And if you're new here, I do cyber related videos. Please feel free to relax and enjoy the content. Please like this video. Please comment on this video. Please subscribe to this channel. Also click that notification bell so you can receive notifications every time I drop this video. So this video serves to show you cybersecurity news of the week. We have a cash app story and we have a plethora of UK slash Russia stories so without further ado let's get right into it all right so let's go cybersecurity news Wednesdays okay so we have cash app which is uh developed by block incorporated because block the name is going to be uh is going to show up pretty soon cash app has informed 8.2 million users that a former former employee has accessed their customer database hence a breach so Block Incorporated has confirmed a data breach involving a former employee who downloaded reports from Cash App that contained some U.S. customer information. Now there has been a filing. So in the filing, right, on April 4th, it said while this employee had regular access to these reports as part of their uh, responsibilities, in this instance, the re these reports were accessed without permission. And when I'm looking at this report, I see, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are reporting that this, this employee accessed these files illegally on December 10th. And you found out April 4th? What's going on? Why it took so long to, to understand that? And you have a huge, huge database. Something smells kind of fishy. Our next story is multiple hacker groups capitalizing on the Ukraine-Russia conflict for distributing malware. What is malware? Malware is an intrusive software that is designed to damage and destroy computers and computer systems. That is malware. So, at least three different hacker groups across the world has launched spear phishing campaigns. What is a spear phishing campaign? A spear phishing campaign is the fraudulent practice of sending emails uh, ostensibly from a known or a trusted sender in order to uh, induce targeted individuals to reveal confidential information. So it is a masquerade. It is somebody masquerading as uh, a person in order to get information from another person via email. So let's say I want to hack Netflix, but I know uh, uh, the name of someone who works at Netflix and I am masquerading as them as someone in HR in order to get confidential information. So I would target the person in HR uh, by using the employee's name I am masquerading to in order to get that uh, information. That is spear phishing. So those three groups has been launching an uh, enormous amount of spear phishing campaigns mid-March 2022 using the ongoing uh, Ukraine-Russia war as a lure to distribute malware and steal sensitive information. Some of the sectors that these groups are targeting is energy, financial, and governmental sectors in Nicaragua, Venezuela, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Pakistan. Now, I'm trying to figure out why are they using why are they targeting those locations? I don't know. What's also interesting is that these attackers are using decoys. What kind of decoys? They're using news articles and job postings to lure these people into the spear phishing campaigns. Huh? Our next story is identity fraud skyrockets as hackers stick to pre-pandemic techniques. So these hackers now are going pre-pandemic and using old techniques. Now, how, how damaging are these techniques? Well, let's look at let, let's look at this report. Identity fraud uh, losses tallied to $52 billion last year in 2021, affecting at least 42 million uh, American adults, right? As hackers move aggressively into hijacking victims' uh, online lives per uh, Javelin Strategy and Research 2022 uh, Identity Fraud Study, the virtual background. So last year, alone there was 52 billion dollars in fraud losses the three ways that uh, cyber attackers are using pre-pandemic uh, st strategies in order to steal uh 
finances from from people is bots malware and a variety of identity fraud scams so let's first cover bots a bot is a robot is, is a robot or a web robot is a software application that runs automated tasks over the internet usually within the, usually with the intent to emulate human activity on the internet such as messaging on a large scale let me give you the definition of malware again malware is an intrusion intrusive a software that is designed to damage and destroy computers and computer systems so they're using bots they're using malware some of the identity fraud scams they got out there is fake websites and i'm talking about from a cybersecurity perspective we have fake websites that uh portray to be legitimate uh, however they also they often have like boxes where you can put your name your email your 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 i um your card information if you wanted to buy something from a website and which is created by a hacker masquerading uh to be legit that's another that's one identity fraud scam that is common we also have uh what they call skimming which skimming occurs when a criminal steals information as the debit card is swiped Scammers may tamper with the electronic card reader so the reader so that it captures card data, right? Place a recording device at an ATM or recruit a crooked salesperson to steal customers' card data. So the next story is the US government disrupts botnet controlled by Russian government hackers. Now, let me tell you what a botnet is. A botnet is short for robot network. And it is basically a network of computers infected by malware that are under control of a single attacking party. That is a botnet. So now the US government announced uh, Wednesday that it has disrupted a botnet controlled by a Russian government hackers before it could be used to launch cyber attacks. So now it is safe to say that the US is somewhat uh, involved from a cybersecurity perspective of this war. In a press release, the Department of Justice announced that it has copied and removed what malware from thousands of infected network firewall devices. What is a firewall? A firewall is a network security device that monitors incoming and outgoing network traffic and permits or blocks data packets based on uh, the set of security policies that a company has. So let me tell you what a data packet is. So a data packet or network packet can be referred, referred to as a unit uh, uh, of data flowing from an origin to a destination address within. So basically IP data packets have a header containing an IP address of origin and destination IP address. Now every time your, your computer logs in to the internet, uh, there is a unique uh, identifier or number and that is your IP address. So if you have a laptop and you're on the internet, you have an IP address. Our next story is the FBI is warning uh, local governments of future ransomware attacks. So what the FBI is warning local governments around the country is if they do not put preventative measures in place, they will suffer uh, as a result because there's going to be an increase in ransomware attacks. What is a ransomware attack? Now, ransomware is a type of malicious software, malware, that threatens to publish or block access to data or a computer system, uh, usually by encrypting it until the victim pays a ransom fee to the attacker. Now, one of the most common forms of payment via a ransomware attack is Bitcoin. Why Bitcoin? Let me know in the comment section below. Now. Going back to this FBI situation, here, here is something that I saw that was very interesting. In the press release, the Department of Justice announced that it had copied and removed malware from thousands of infected uh, network firewall devices, which were under control uh, by Russia's main intelligence dict uh, directorate, commonly known as GRU, and its hacker group known as Sandworm. The last story of the day is researchers trace widespread espionage attacks back to Chinese uh, Sakaida uh, hackers. Now this Chinese hacker group is usually known for singling out Japanese entities. However, now they are trying to expand uh, the locations of in which they uh, attack. So why would they be doing that? Now, you wanna know something funny? <laughs> Do 
they have so many names this chinese hacker group and that that is something to take heed that i understand a lot of hacker groups they have so many names they're also known as ap uh t10 a uh, stone panda potassium brown bronze riverside and menu pass team what kind what kind of names are those now some of the victims that th th this hacker group that has so many names bronze riverside in uh they attack government legal religious and non-governmental organizations in multiple countries across the world including europe asia and north america wow and all of this is due to this uh uh, semantic threat hunter team they're the ones that are behind this story that are that are trying to find some resolution to this problem well that was cybersecurity news of the week thank you for watching this video if you like this video click the thumbs up button right below the video and subscribe by clicking the big red button right below the video also if you enjoyed this video then you probably will enjoy this video that's on the screen so if you click on the screen right now you can watch that Want to see a cyber security? Want to see a cyber security story that you want me to cover? Put it in the comment section below. Also, click the notification bell right next to the subscribe button to get notifications when I upload new videos. Lastly, please feel free to watch other videos on this channel. Stay safe, hack, pack. Please feel free to watch, like, and comment other videos on this channel. Subscribe now.